Hey everyone, this is Ross, and in today's video, I want to talk about Spy Yang fruit trees. And uh, I think today's a really good day to do this because the peaches are kind of, sort of losing their vibrance, but they are in full bloom. Um, they actually look really beautiful, and this is probably the best time to be observing the beauty of our Espaillade fruit trees, or even Espaillade trees in general, is that they have a really interesting look to them, and then if they can flower, they're even more beautiful. So I think this is a really good day. Also, you can also still see the structure because it's still early spring, and a lot of these trees really haven't fully leafed out yet. So you can really see that structure of the espalier form. Now, what is an espalier? An espalier is basically a fancy French term for growing a tree or training a tree against the wall. And you can see just how thin that is. I mean, that's maybe three feet, four feet at the, the furthest point here. I would say the furthest point is probably that branch but that's really not a whole lot of space that these trees are taking up. Not only are they not taking up a lot of space, but they're beautiful, and they're also productive, I would say, for the space that they're growing in. What I would do if I could really plant anything I wanted on this property, I would be planting a lot more spiaes because they do take up a lot less space, and I think the beauty is just unbelievable. What I would do is probably right next to these espaliers, put another row of them here, maybe a third row here, and kind of, because this is on a downhill slope, you can kind of even plant them a bit deeper, maybe dig a couple trenches and put them in so that you'd have a few rows of these. And it would just look really beautiful. And we've kind of done similar things around the whole fence here, where we've got grapevines trained up. We need to tighten up this wire and straighten up that t-post but all this stuff's being trained against wires we have two new grapevines being trained along the back here they're quite small you can't really see them but also we put in two plum trees we have a plum here and a plum there which will also be a spy aid against these two wires here so let's talk about now kind of how to do this it's really really simple it doesn't take a rocket scientist. You don't have to be growing fruit trees or even trees. You don't really have to have the greenest of thumbs because I really think this is pretty simple. What you do is you just get yourself a T-post. You can also get these little eye hooks. I'm gonna show you these eye hooks on the other side of the fence. We'll kind of screw into a wall. You can also screw them into really whatever you want. And essentially what you do is you put these little eye hooks in the fence, wrap a wire around that, and then it grows along the fence. So that's one way of doing it. But for me, I think a T-post works out real well. Um, it, you know, especially if you don't want to damage the fence in any way. But you can get yourself some nice size T-posts from Home Depot. They're probably about three bucks a piece. And then what you gotta do is get yourself some wire. Here's the other piece that you need. And this stuff should be on the lower side of the gauge. So you're looking for a certain gauge, you're looking for a certain material. I would say somewhere around 11 or 10, 14 gauge wire. The stuff that's really meant to be outdoors. I forget what this material here is made out of, but I know the brand Ook, O-O-K, they sell this stuff at Home Depot. Um, you can find this pretty much anywhere. So. You know, this is really good stuff and it, it holds a certain amount of weight. That's what that gauge is telling you. So the lower the gauge, the more weight it can hold. I haven't necessarily found that these wires need to hold really all that much weight because what's ended up happening is that the branch is really supporting a lot of that weight in general. And the wire is kind of just a guide. I haven't really used a lot of this in particular for the Espaillat trees, maybe the grapevines for sure, but we're not really using this as much as a, a source of holding all that weight. It's really just a guide. So once we've got our guide, and you can do this any way you want. You can do a three tier structure like we've got here. You got one here, one there, and then the one on the bottom. You could do two, you could do five. I mean, you could do as many as you want. But what you wanna do is as the tree is young, and this is really the whole key to the whole thing is that you got to have the right materials, but you also 
need to be able to train these trees and understand what needs to happen when these trees are young. So you can see here, this is a really freshly planted, really young tree. So what's gonna happen is, there's all this growth here at the first wire. And you can see there's all these new little branches coming out. One of these branches is going to become king. It's going to be superior. It's going to beat out all the other ones. It's going to have auxin, which is going to suppress the lower shoots. That's a hormone in the tree in most plants that will suppress that lower growth. So one of these shoots will eventually come up to here, to this next wire. And what you've got in this particular year is because you have all these shoots that are at the current wire that you want to tie them down to, we're going to let these guys grow out for an entire year and then once they reach a certain height we can then begin tying them down to this wire and they're already at the appropriate height it's really actually super simple and then once this tree goes dormant let's say it already has reached this height or maybe it reached a bit higher than this maybe it's over the fence we're going to then clip it the next year right here and then it's gonna do the same thing that it's doing right now down here. The same exact thing's gonna happen and you're gonna tie these down the following year. And you're gonna have that form that you want. And essentially that's all you're trying to do is maintain that shape. You can see that there's some lower shoots down here. I don't really even care about these. So we're gonna really, we can even take these off if we want. Maybe we'll leave them just for the first year to get a lot of growth, a lot of root growth as well. You can see here's like the kind of next step. This is like a year, almost a year ahead of that tree. So we've already got the form here. This was the one branch that became king and decided to grow up real tall. And you can see we clipped it up here. And because we clipped it right here, you can see that cut. It's now sending out all these shoots. Two of these shoots are going to be selected next year during the dormancy process. We can tie these down along the wire. We've already got our permanent shoot that will be tied down to here. And we also have our another permanent shoot that will be tied down to here. So we've got ourselves pretty much a guaranteed form. The issue then becomes every year coming back to these shoots. And depending on the fruit tree, depending on what it is, you may have to kind of instill a different type of pruning. And it's really not recommended to be espying peaches, but I've managed to be able to figure out a way to do it. Essentially what you have to do is come in here and prune out all that three-year-old wood. Because the peaches, they fruit on last year's growth. So all that growth from last year, all that one-year-old wood, that's where these fruits will form and these flowers will form. So we need to make sure that we're constantly recycling that older wood to constantly get newer wood. Whereas a peach, or I'm sorry, whereas an apple, let's say, or a, a pear, it's kind of different, right? Some of them may fruit on spurs, and if we can control the spurs, keep a lot of these spurs alive, as you can see here, well, maybe that's not a spur, but here's a spur right here on the apples. So if we can control these spurs as an example and keep enough of these, the tree will fruit year after year. Here's some actual, some uh, tip bearing here. But, you know, it really does come down to what species of tree it is in terms of pruning, but the basics are all there, right? It's really just coming back to that main structure year after year. Don't let it get out of control. What you don't want to do as well, let me show you guys this, is you don't want to come in here and let a lot of growth grow towards the fence. I'd also recommend planting them a bit closer to the fence than I have. There's about a nice little foot gap between the tree and the fence. I would go about six inches maybe. Um, you know, unless this tree is going to be here forever and maybe it could potentially ruin the fence um, in terms of the trunk just getting so thick that maybe this really thick trunk would then grow into the fence. I don't know, but the point is I think it looks a bit nicer and it's a lot more clean if the tree was a bit closer to the fence. All that growth that's growing towards the fence is eventually going to get shaded out anyway. 
So a lot of it you really don't even want. So what I do is I come in here every year and I usually clip this stuff out if it's growing towards that direction. So other than that, it's really, really simple. You can get some, by the way, if you wanna tie this stuff down, there's a million things you can do. I really like to use this green tape here. It doesn't girdle the tree nearly as much. You can get that stuff at Home Depot too. You can get it online, anywhere. You can also use rubber bands. I mean, you can use almost anything that's hopefully gonna last yourself an entire season. Once that whole season is ended, what you should do is come in here and actually take this stuff off because you don't wanna have it girdle the tree or girdle that branch. All right, everyone, so that is the video on espying fruit trees. I hope this one was enjoyable. All right, everyone, take care.